Hi. Today we are learning how to turn this, I tried this, tried that, tried everything. into this. But before we do that, I would like to give a quick shout out to Plugin Boutique. I recently became their affiliate, meaning that if you use my affiliate link to purchase any plugins from them, I get a small commission. It does not cost you any extra money, but I get a cut of their sale. So if you are planning on purchasing from them anyways, it would help me out tremendously if you did so through my link, which you can find in the description down below. You get your plugin and you are supporting the channel simultaneously. I personally love Plugin Boutique, which is why I'm very happy to be their affiliate. They often have great discounts and good offers. So I recommend checking out their store. Now back to the video. So how does vocoders work and how do we set it up in FL Studio? A vocoder consists of three things. A modulator, which is usually the vocal, a carrier, which is usually a synth, and a vocoder plugin that we use to bring it all together. When you hear a vocoder, you're actually hearing the carrier, the synth. It's being modulated by the modulator, the vocal, but it's still the synth you're hearing. At least primarily, but we'll get back to that later. One way you can picture this is that the synth is a rock and the vocal is a sculptor making a beautiful statue of itself, carving its way into the rock. I hope that makes sense. It's probably not the most accurate description, but it's something that helped me understand modulation better and I hope it helped you as well. I'm not going to go into more detail here, I just wanted to make that distinction, that the synth is what we are hearing when we hear a vocoder. It's important to understand that to know how we should go about setting the vocoder up, which we'll do now. First, grab the vocal, the modulator you want to vocal. I'll use this sample from Splice. I tried this, tried that, tried every cool. Then add the synth, the carrier. This synth can be anything, Personally, I like to use Harmor. I think the default preset sounds great for raw coding, just a clean sawtooth, but you can use anything you like. Then write in your MIDI. I'll make some chords, but you can use single notes as well if you want to. Put it into your playlist alongside with your vocal. It's important that they play together to work. I'll just label them for my own sake. Now we'll route them both to the mixer. Then on an unused mixer track, preferably close to our modulator and carrier, we'll add the vocoder plugin. I'll use Vocodex. Inside Vocodex, we can see these boxes up here where it says mod and car, which you guessed it, stands for modulator and carrier. It even has these tiny symbols to help us remember which is what. If we try to adjust these boxes now, nothing happens. That's because we haven't routed the vocal and synth to this track yet. So let's do that. Select them both, then right click down here and choose sidechain to this track only. This will send the signal to this mixer track with no volume and simultaneously remove the signal to the master. So we are left with no volume output from either of them. If we go back to Vocodex now, we can change these boxes by either sliding them up or right clicking them. Whatever is leftmost in your mixer will be number one and the other will be two. You can be 100% sure by right clicking and see what you are selecting. So there's no way to go wrong here. And then if we press play, we have successfully vocoded our vocals. Nice. Most of the work is done. From here, it's about taste and making it sound as good as possible. I'll show you some of the most important parameters within Vocodex to get you started. First, we have the VET knob. Set to 100%, we only hear the vocoder. Let's turn it to zero and we only hear the vocal. So when I said you only hear the synth when you hear a vocoder, it doesn't necessarily have to be true. We can still blend the original vocal signal in with our vocoder, which Vocodex does by default. The reason the vocal sounds so thin is simply because there is a high pass filter here. If we turn it down, you can hear more of the vocal. But I think it's nice the way it's set up by default, where you are only getting a little bit of the highs from the modulator bleeding through. Moving on, we have the volume controls for both the modulator and carrier. So if you want some of the original synth to bleed through, you can turn it up here. Note that underneath here, there are a low pass filter instead of a high pass filter to control the synth. Let's take a look at our attack and release knob. 
the lower attack we have, the more accurately Vocodex will track the volume envelope of the vocal. So it gets very tight and maybe a little harsh if we turn it down. If we want a smoother sound, we can turn it up. The more release we add, the more metallic and reverberated it sounds, which can be nice. Next, we have the order settings, which can dramatically change how the vocoder sounds. I find that the lower order sounds more robotic, while the higher order sounds more human. None is better than the other, it's all about preference. Just use your ears and find what works best for you. I like to use two as a starting off point and adjust it later if I feel like it. Then we have the bands. Each band represents a slice of the carrier frequency spectrum. In other words, setting the number of bands sets how many pieces we chop our synth into. These bands are what your modulator gets to work with. So with five bands, our vocal, our modulator, only has five bands to adjust when replicating itself, which makes for a very robotic result. Meanwhile, if we turn it all the way up to 100 bands, we get a much more accurate result, which does not mean better by any means. More accurate to the original vocal, yes, but not necessarily better. There's a reason we are using a vocoder, right? We want it to sound like a vocoder, not, not the original vocal. Older classic vocoders use between 8 and 16 bands, and that's what I personally think sounds best. That's the sound I want. So I'll set it to about 15, 16. The last important parameter we look at is the bandwidth, which sets how wide the bands are. Thin bands will give you a resonant and sharp sound, while wide bands will give you a smooth and buzzy sound. As with every other parameter here, adjust it by ear. Don't get too caught up with the visuals. If it sounds good, it is good. And that covers the essentials you need to know to begin vocoding. If you want to take a deeper dive and learn more about how to use Vocodex, I recommend checking out the manual by pressing F1 on your keyboard, which will take you to the relevant page of whatever you currently have open in FL Studio. I know it's not the most exciting way to learn, but the FL Studio manual is well written and straight to the point. So if you just want to know what a specific parameter does, you can just open the manual by pressing F1, figure it out and move on with your life. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Before you click off, if this helped you out, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I promise to bless your feed with great FL Studio content. If you want to support me and what I do, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com soundsage. Link is in the description down below. See ya!